The banking sector is on the verge of collapse. We have been running a Ponzi scheme. Since the beginning of the year, we've been running a Ponzi scheme. Because all of you are trading using RTGS balances. Some of you have got debit cards. So we are all exchanging hot air, but the real money is not there. That's a Ponzi scheme. Guys. When you trade in, in fiction, Makasa. So if someone were to demand that money, then the, then the, the pyramid will, will fall. So this government has been running upon the scheme, a pyramid scheme, and they've created artificial money of over two billion US dollars. If you were, all of us were to go to our bank and say, honor the balances in our bank, that money is not there. It's just what air we've been running upon the scheme. And that's a crisis. That is a crisis. So great a crisis that they have to return the Zimbabwean dollar. Because to many people, not returning the Zimbabwean dollar is the difference between Chikurubi and freedom. Because they have to monetize this debt, this gap that they've created. There's a huge gap in their books which they have to monetize. But they can't borrow, no one will lend the money. Who lent money to this idiotic government? So no one is going to do that. So they have to monetize this, this gap by bringing back the Zimbabwean dollar. Which is the Zimbabwean dollar. I wish you could read uh, Structural Instrument 133 of 2016. You will see the court applications that are going to be filed. I don't know by who, but you will see those court applications uh, very soon. Then, of course, we have got, we have got a trade crisis, our current account deficit. We as a nation are eating that which we have not produced. If you go to our supermarket, it's full of foreign commodities. If you look at your shares there, we are eating that which we have not spent. So the net result is that we've got a huge current account deficit, which is now 17% of GDP. That's a huge, that's a huge current account deficit. The ratio of our ex exports to imports is one is to three, which means that for every dollar that is coming in as export earnings, three dollars are going out as imports. A major crisis. Another crisis in our economy is corruption. These guys steal this this government. They, they, the culture of corruption in this country. We have overtaken. The two worst countries on the corruption index in, in Africa, South Africa and Nigeria. And when you have corruption, you also have inequality. So the Gini coefficient, which is a measure of inequality, has also increased. But corruption is unfair to ordinary men and women, you and I. Because corruption puts, is a tax on all of us. So when you see a huge Mercedes-Benz, some of them have no names, Packed at Borodo Brook, you must know that you, the citizen, are paying a tax. Where I stay there, they are now building houses on mountains where 20 years ago engineers would have said it's not possible to build a house there, but they're doing it, including pastors. <laughs> so corruption has become a huge. I, I estimate that. For every dollar that is produced in Zimbabwe, every dollar that is produced through hard work, 40 cents of that is going away through corruption. And the private sector is very guilty. The private sector is very guilty. Between 2009 and 2012, this country lost 3 billion US dollars in illicit financial flows. And that's happening every day. That is happening every day. Underpricing, over invoicing, thin transfers and so forth. So the private sector is as guilty as the public sector. The only difference between the private sector and the, and the public sector is that the public sector is crude. They are not used to money, so when these Zanupia people steal, they steal so that we can see Chimbaba. That's the only difference. Whereas the private sector, they are a bit smarter about it. So a thief in the private sector will drive a Toyota Corolla to work. That's the only difference. But a thief in government will drive two Range Rovers. One after the other. So I once saw Amazon Mnangagwa. He once chased me away from Enterprise Road. He was driving here about 20 cars. I said, Baba, Baba, come on. You are watching.
सिंधि आई एन टीवी But the biggest crisis in our economy, comrades and friends, is the crisis of confidence. The biggest crisis in our economy is a crisis of confidence. We don't trust Zanu PF. In September of 2013, a few months after the collapse of the GNU, the stock exchange value was wiped by 70% from a market capitalization of 5 billion to a market capitalization of 1.5 billion. It's more than 70%. In the month of September 2013 alone over 1 billion US dollars capital flight took place and on the government own admission by the end of December 2013 over 300 companies have just closed companies just closed and say we are not opening after Christmas and look at it very closely the condition the material conditions between the time of the GNU and now have not changed so if we are under sanctions or no sanctions in the GNU the status quo is ch is not changed but what has changed why is it that we are now suffering so much now than we were under the GNU the answer is very simple it's our attitude to our government we don't trust it that's the biggest problem to our economy something that is invisible the lack of trust and so those like chatamaus who are pushing for an economic an economy centric approach to solution to our crisis are making the mistake of thinking that it's about figures it's not about figures it's about confidence it's about confidence we don't trust our government so how do we deal with the fundamental problem of confidence how do we deal with the fundamental uh, problem of confidence in our view as pdp we started thinking in 2013 and we started thinking to uh, we started we posed a question and the question we posed then was what will happen to this country if robert mugabe were to die that question worried us that question really worried us why do i mention robert mugabe robert mugabe is a founding president now post independent founding presidents are dangerous the likes of mwalimu nyerere kenneth kaunda Ngwami Nguruma, Siad Bare, you could put Joseph Mobutu Sese Seko there even though he wasn't the founding president of 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 the Democratic Republic of Congo. They are dangerous Muzee Kenyatta of Kenya. They are dangerous in that they become larger than the state. They've got more they've got both de facto and de jure power. That's the problem with founding presidents. They can do whatever they want with the country. Look at Mugabe. He hires and fires ministers, judges, every, everyone is beholden to him. Everyone is beholden to him. He's like a god. In fact, in, 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 I was in, in Kinshasa uh, in, in 2012. They, the song, which I can't, because I can't sing uh, Lingali, their local language, I'll, I'll give you the translation. And the, the song which they used to sing for Mobutu Sese Seko, in, in, in their mother language, Lingali. And this song basically went as follows. There is a God in heaven and there is a God on earth. The God on earth is Mobutu Sese Seko. That captures the power of founding presidents. Now, the problem with these creatures called founding presidents is that sometimes when they demise, the state is not powerful enough to survive their departure. The state is fragile. So sometimes the state actually collapses because remember by the way the, the in the African states there are no strong institutions. The judiciary is weak. Civic society is weak. Political parties are weak. So the strongest institution in the country becomes that founding president. So we saw it in 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 Somalia. Siad Bari died in 1991 and when he died Somalia has never been a nation state. They are trying to pretend that they are trying to pretend that they are now a nation state. But I can tell you, the current president of Somalia should only be called the mayor of Mogadishu because his reach doesn't go beyond Mogadishu.